All right, now some uh, strong words today from Supervisor Joel Anderson, the latest to criticize the federal government for what he calls abandoning immigrants at San Diego transit centers. Now, in the past week, about 800 immigrants have been dropped off, nearly 200 of those in El Cajon. And that's where we find KUSI's Dan Plant tonight. Dan, uh, have you seen any drop-offs there today? No, not yet today. And actually, over the past two days, I guess maybe even three now, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday so far, nobody has seen any drop-offs. But as you know, you covered the story last week. From Friday through Monday, there were something like 800 people dropped off in San Diego County, whether it was here in El Cajon, whether it was up in Oceanside, whether it was in San Diego. They're being dropped all over the place. Now, take a look at the video that we got, and I believe, Rafer, you and your photographer got this last Friday, and that is the actual immigrants being unloaded loaded right here in El Cajon at the transit center at the bus stop and as far as we know they didn't know where they were going to go from there and they were dropped off up in the middle of the night now according to some of the information that we're getting now believe it or not the Southwest Airlines thing actually plays into this because those planes were grounded and a lot of those people were scheduled to actually fly to different parts of the country. So that was one thing that backed up a lot of folks. Then, of course, the shelters were just full entirely because of the weather that was going on, bad, bad weather. Um, and they just don't have the capacity to handle this many people. And keep in mind, Title 42 has not yet expired. So this is, I guess, what's gonna happen. And up till Title 42, it is going to be crazy. So earlier today, we got a chance to catch up with Joel Anderson, county supervisor. And yeah, he does have some strong words, particularly for the federal government to start doing their job. Take a look. Here we are, you can look, you can see there's absolutely no resources here. And yet we've had almost 200 people uh, dropped off. And when I say dropped off, when you leave somebody and you don't give them shelter, food, clothes, or health care uh, in any way, shape, or form, and they may not speak the language, we call that in East County abandonment. We, you're abandoning people on our streets and it's not right. And look, I've talked to agents. Border Patrol agents get no joy in dropping people off in the middle of the night, abandoning them uh, at a transit center. Uh, they believe that, that these uh, asylum seekers should be treated better, and we know certainly our communities need to be treated better. Uh, this El Cajon in East County has welcomed more asylum seekers, more refugees than anywhere else in California. So our hearts are open, but we shouldn't have to carry the burden alone. This is a human tsunami that's crossing our border, and while I can't control border policy, uh, I have to protect my communities. Where did those people go? Do we know where they went from here? We have no idea. One, uh, we don't know when they're going to be left here, abandoned, and from there we don't know. All righty, back here live at the El Cajon Transit Center, and you know, they don't even know where these guys went. I guess they tracked one of the people who got to the airport, probably still stuck in the airport right now, apparently was scheduled to fly back east to meet with his family. As for these other folks, uh, if County Supervisor Joel Anderson, who is part of a large government group, doesn't know where these guys are, who does and where are they right now? And again, with the resources, you know, what resources did they have? Did they have plane tickets in their pocket? I know some of them have had asylum papers, so they were given that much asylum papers to keep moving along. But from there, where do you go? And of course, the homeless crisis already in San Diego is beyond comprehension, combined with the crisis at the border that is basically a federal created crisis. And all Joel Anderson and other people are saying is, this is the federal government's job. This is the federal government's responsibility. The federal government needs to step up. And of course, everybody knows that the policies trickling down from Washington are one of the main reasons why this is happening, because the invitation is out. Come on in. The water's fine. It's the United States of America. And I talked with a former Border Patrol agent today who now says there are 160 countries now, different people from 160 countries applying for asylum in the United States, 160 countries. And right now, under the current policy, all you got to do is put up your hand and say, credible fear, and they go, okay, you qualify for asylum. Of course, that has changed with Title 42. Title 42 has allowed them 
to actually expel people without all that, right? Just to say, hey, this is a health crisis. Um, you know, you're from a certain country, so you can't come in. Uh, you got to stay over in Mexico. So when Title 42 expires, when and if that expires, and it probably will because the Supreme Court has it again in February to decide what to do with it, um, people are expecting, as he said, another tsunami coming across. Joel Anderson said between 500 and 1,500 people a day are expected to come through San Diego County. And since we don't have capacity to handle the people we already have, where are they going to go? One final thing, FEMA apparently has $700 million in emergency aid available that could be used to build temporary shelters, things like that, that they do during hurricanes and natural disasters. According to Joel Anderson, this is a disaster. This requires an immediate FEMA response. If not that, get the money down here so we can use it, because this is a crisis that is caused by the federal government and unfortunately trickling down to local governments who just simply cannot handle it. We'll throw it back to you. Yeah, Dan, when I was out there, uh, they had been in a detention center for three days. Their phones were dead and they were looking for a restaurant to charge their phones. I gave them directions to a Denny's. Uh, and then that was it that we left. They, they simply left and went into the night. Real quick question. Are they even giving any notice when yeah. they're dropping these folks off? No, and that's the thing. Apparently, many, many years ago, the federal government gave notice to different communities. Murrieta comes to mind. And the folks of Murrieta basically blockaded those buses coming in. So there is no more notice. This is the county doesn't know. The city doesn't know. I don't know if the state knows anything. The federal government is just ordering the Border Patrol to do this. And as you heard Joel Anderson say, Border Patrol does not want to do this. Uh, it is just the policies that are trickling down from the White House, essentially, that is is forcing them to drop all these folks off at these transit centers. So no, they don't get noticed before it happens and they don't get noticed after it happens. The only way we found out was because someone called and said, hey, do you see what's going on down here? And suddenly we learned it's happening all over the place. So it is a federal government responsibility and unfortunately now falling on the shoulders of local and city governments. So it's a tough deal out here on top of a tough deal that's already happening, that's for sure. Dan Plan, thank you so much for the story. Take it easy.